What's up guys? So today I have a video on the Mitsubishi since it's been parked for a minute and um, I was going through my eBay purchase list and I noticed I had some fuel injectors that I had bought in quite some time ago um, that I've been wanting to install. I had an idea of turbo uh, turboing this car and recently James D guy from Texas Honda channel um, started you know installing a turbo so that sort of brought brought back some sparks and um, so right now that the car is sort of sitting and nobody's driving it uh, I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and you know start pulling stuff apart so I did mention that my AC had given out uh, this one I don't know what happened to it and I don't know much about it so uh, it does have fuel, uh, not fuel, it has a, um, what's it called, the pressure, but it doesn't want to circulate it, so I don't know what's wrong with it. So today, we're going to install those fuel injectors. Uh, those are slightly bigger injectors. Uh, the ones in the car are 220 cc's, and these are 250 cc's. Uh, I'll put the model of the injector somewhere in the screen. But we're going to start by taking off all these uh, connectors just so we can remove the fuel rail. It's just two 12s and a couple of plugs on the injectors. And uh, we'll pull up the injectors and replace them. See what the car's going to do. Uh... You disconnected the crank position sensor. Dale. Yep, so that's just the idle on the stock injectors. Yeah, that's just the PCB valve. So that's just idling and stock injectors. It's a stock engine, no modifications. So the, the 250cc injector, it's a CDH240. And I believe the stock ones are CDH166. So, here's the injector, I think on the inside it says licensed Bosch. So that only took us about eight minutes in real time and all the injectors are installed uh, the spacers in the back so the injectors come with new filters on the top and it comes with new o-rings also the reason it took us more than five minutes is because you dropped that little space oh yeah uh, <laughs> it fell down the engine bay so i'm gonna just go ahead and just start it see what it's gonna sound like see what it's gonna do no let it go We need a... Fuel rail was out of fuel. Oh yeah, we, we emptied it out. Yeah. The air was trapped in that tube, so you gotta... Is it... Yeah, the fuel rail was empty. It, it has a different idle, right? 
Like it's it, dumping a bit. Yeah, it, it is going to feel a little different. It's a little bit more fuel. So there's not enough air to compensate for that fuel. So you're going to get that raw smell, raw fuel smell coming out of the turbo for a bit. Once you add that turbo on there, you should be fine. Yeah. So yeah, so the plans are now that the car is parked for a minute, remove the AC compressor and all the lines, maybe the condenser up here in front. Um, the turbo manifold is only about $75, $80 that I've seen it. And I could probably get my hands on a $100 turbo, um, intercooler pipings and stuff like that slowly. Um, but it's the first start, I guess, the injectors. I also have the, this is the fuel pressure regulator that I What are you doing, Joe? So this is a fuel pressure regulator that I purchased just a while back, five months ago. And I never got to install, so this one comes with a gauge. It's one of those aftermarket Chinese products, but, you know, it was cheap. And the, of course, the fuel lines, the steel braided fuel lines that it came with are over at the garage. So I need to bring those. Maybe install that later on. And uh, maybe just you know, make it like a little project fun car with turbo, you know, get a Walbro 250 fuel pump and just upgrade it slowly. So, does it rev up, Joe? Yeah. It revs up? The idles kind of. But if you mess with the, uh, it feels like the misfire, right? Yeah, it's another thing. Maybe get an O2 sensor with a wide band. So I don't know much about tuning. I don't even have a laptop, but I'm pretty sure that can come later on. And yeah, I had uh, installed some tint on this front windows. I have a short video on it. Uh, the only exception. <laughs> I apologize, but I sort of uh, deleted the footage of actually tinting, but the re removal and installation of the window is just there. I guess if you guys want it, I'll throw it in there as, as well. Mm. All right, so right now we're in here inside the car. We have the check engine light. The brake light is just e-brake, but we're gonna check the check engine light using this OBD scan. This is a LM32 I got from eBay. Uh, it's about $10. So this one you just plug in to your OBD side. Where the hell is it? Let me find it. Point it towards the back. All right, there it is. And I'm gonna use the phone. All right, so this is. All right, we'll start right here. So I think this is recording the screen. So right now it is connecting through Bluetooth. Checking model, connected ECU, okay. All right, so we're gonna go right here into fault codes. Show logged faults. And right here is uh, pulling up all the engine codes that are coming up. So we got a P0400 EGR flow. Okay. Is that expected with the fuel injectors? Like I said, I mean, you're getting a little, it's running a little rich. Too much fuel? Yeah. So the EGR is just sending too much, Hold on. too much uh, fumes. All right, so. The, the fumes are very, very heavy. Raw fuel. Yeah. Raw fuel back in too much raw fuel going through the exhaust, basically. So as expected, it comes with the oversized injectors. Uh, but these are slightly, uh, the original stock ones are 220 cc's and the ones we installed are 250's. Uh, so that's going to be the code that's coming up, the EGR flow, too much fuel. Let's go back to the exhaust. Just installed some injectors and this car is parked, nobody's driving it. gonna be it guys thank you so much for watching always comment and i'll see you on my next video
out.